متابعين يلا كورة أهلا بكم حوارنا النهاردة مع محسن ارتجال المدير الفني السابق لكايزر تشيفز والإسماعيلي والمستشار التقني للاتحاد التركي لكرة القدم اللي هيكلمنا عن نهائي دوري أبطال أفريقيا بين الأهلي وكايزر تشيفز وتجربته مع بيتسو ميسيماني ورأيه في مصطفى محمد وتجربته في الدوري التركي في البداية نحب نرحب بمستر محسن ارتجال المدير الفني السابق لكايزر تشيفز ونهنيه على تأهل الفريق لنهائي دوري الأبطال ضد الأهلي ودي البطولة الأولى اللي يوصل فيها الفريق لنهائي قاري منذ الفوز بكأس الكؤوس الأفريقية معاه سنة 2001. 20 years ago, yeah, actually we played quarter final against Ismaili and uh, on that time, I must say Ismaili, I think on, on those years won the uh, won the championship in Egypt, in Egypt. and uh, Salah, coach Captain Mosse Salah was the coach, and uh, which we have a great friendship, and he is now with Alahli as the advisor. That's uh, my regards to him from here. Uh, we, we enjoyed uh, the competition at that time, and I respect him very much. And yeah, all those years was actually uh, different football, different way, and uh, we all we all glorified at those years. Uh, I think that was a bit different to also to work with the player, and it was the only victory that Kaiser Chiefs had in the history of football. Yeah. إذا معنى كلامك إنك وصلت لنهائي كأس كؤوس على حساب الإسماعيلي ثم لعبت كأس السوبر الإفريقي ضد الأهلي. Yes, and later on we played the Super Cup, uh, which was not a different, uh, a complete different uh, competition, uh, and uh, and الأهلي had the advantage uh, to play at home. ولو تكلمنا عن أفضلية الأهلي في كأس السوبر أكيد أنت متذكر هدف عصام الحضري التاريخي في مرمى كايزر تشيفز. Uh, these, these are moments in life that you probably never forget. Uh, uh, I remember that uh, was a great player in Osaka Khalid Bibo was playing on that time and uh, I said, to, I remember I said to my defenders, don't turn and pass the ball backwards. The moment when you turn, Khalid will always go quickly, uh, run already from your body language, you can see and he will run in. First one nil was exactly like that, Marco Muten turned, passed the ball back, Khalid went between, get the ball scored. Uh, and then the second one was the long ball uh, with, I think, the third one. That was our, that, that broke our, our neck. It was the long, long, long free kick. But, uh, uh, it was a fantastic, uh, we never expected that. The goalkeeper didn't expect that. And that was actually the victory. You're Turkey, but you've lived 25 years from the training in the country of Africa. What did you do in Africa during this period? It's actually interesting. Not always. Um, uh, I found my home in South Africa. I we love Africa. I also been in Egypt, in Tunisia. Also been um, remember very well my statement in Egypt. It was not long time, long enough. Uh, it was very short. Uh, but still have uh, great friends uh, there. I have worked in three continents. Uh, worked in, in, in the Austrian Bundesliga, Germany, yeah. uh, Germany background. Uh, played in Turkey, in, in Germany, Belgium. And then uh, being the Zaire national team, on the, this, this time was Congo uh, in the Africa Cup 96. And then came to Egypt, came to Tunisia, came to Austria, went to Arab Emirates uh, in uh, Benyas, Banyas in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, coached in different continents, coached in Turkey in Turkish Premier League, Trabzonspor, Sivaspor. Yeah, first, uh, Egyptian football is different. Um, I think Egyptian football is a powerhouse of, of African football, if you can say so. Obviously, you have uh, as well, I think, um, that when you look into the national teams, you have Algeria, you have uh, Morocco, uh, you have as well Tunisia, you have to mention those countries, which are, I think, the North African countries are the powerhouse of, uh, of African football. Uh, by side, you, you have a little bit also, that's not only a little bit good uh, West African teams, which the advantage of this team is playing in Europe, in, uh, in any, any team in the world, uh, important teams in the world. Uh, I think Egyptian football has, has developed himself. We have, uh, we have also some years now, Egyptian players also coming to the Premier League in Turkish, Super League in Turkey. Um, it's a mix of European uh, and um, a uh, mix, mixture of, uh, of football that actually suits in Africa to be successful. And um, yeah, uh, it's always for me, for myself, also was a, a great experience to be there. I worked with uh, Hosni Abdurabu, uh, with Ahmed Fatih. Actually, I, I was the person who bring him up from the youth, and, uh, uh, which was uh, Mohsin Abu Grisha uh, was also a name that uh, I always uh, have in my mind, a great player. وهل تابعت مشوار كايزر تشيفز خلال الفترة دي حتى نهائي دوري الأبطال؟ 
Uh, I was very busy this year because I'm with the Turkish national team at the moment, and we had the preparation for the for the Euro, which um, the Euro was a bit uh, disaster for us. But uh, obviously, I follow my clubs. I also follow Ismaili. What are, what is happening? Uh, what are the progresses? Uh, I followed Kaiser Chiefs. Obviously, I have also a couple of players that I have worked with. Uh, Ito and Kune, uh, for instance, the goalkeeper that uh, have worked already on my time with me. And um, yeah, there was, uh, I think, last year's more a problem with the team. Uh, too many coaches have changed. It is very unusual for, for Kaiser Chiefs, for the, for the history of Kaiser Chiefs, to change so many coaches. That doesn't show off stability. And um, follow the team, the way how they progress. A, 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 co a friend of mine was the head coach, Kevin Hunt. And now they brought in Baxter, uh, which again, a complete different philosophy and background. And um, he's a more a coach that wants to play a trans quick transition football. And uh, yeah, it doesn't didn't show stability, I think, last couple of years. هل تعتقد أن رحيل جافين هانت عن كايزر تشيفز بعد وصوله لنصف النهائي كان قرار منطقي من إدارة النادي؟ I mentioned that publicly. Uh, I had an interview about that, and I didn't find that very, very good for Kaiser Chiefs to do that. Um, because given as much we can all discuss the coach on the head, uh, didn't well uh, went very well for them. Uh, it seems to be that uh, the, the the chairman when he changed the coach. It went right for them. They went back to the top eight and um, they play the final now. Uh, the decision for their view probably is right, but changing a coach is always, <clears throat> I think, is a very difficult, uh, very difficult version. When you have made change too many times, then um, that means that the management also have done not something wrong. في رأيك مين اللاعب اللي بيمثل أهمية كبيرة لكايزر تشيفز حاليا قبل نهائي دور الأبطال ضد الأهلي؟ Yeah, Manyama. Uh, Manyama was my player, um, and he was uh, also in Turkey with Konya Spor, uh, which I have developed him also so my time in Black Aces with Ajax, when I was with Ajax. Um, and uh, he's a great player, he's, he can change the game. And um, he was last couple of months not very happy with the approach of the previous coaches and uh, the way how he wants to see the game play. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the players have become in the world football now much more important. And as you can see that also in, uh, in Al Ahli, very important and good players you have there. And uh, so you need to find the right way how to suit the, the, the way how they approach the game. And Manyama is a player that uh, is, is ex ex extremely a good player who plays between the lines. شفنا ان الفريق بيأدي بشكل دفاعي ضد الوداد في نصف النهائي تفتكر هي دي الاستراتيجيه اللي هيعتمد عليها المدرب في نهائي البطوله ضد الاهلي نو ذا كان اتاك فوتبول دي دونت هاف ذا بوسيبيليتيز ات ذا مومنت وات اي كان سي اند ذا الاهلي از فور مي تو دومينانت ان 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 ذا واي هاو ذا ابروتش ذا جيم بيتسو از ا كوتش ذات وونتس ا دومينانت فوتبول اند not a transition football and the coach who came in now Baxter uh, they have only a short period of time to change and bring the philosophy of the coaching that is very dangerous uh, players in the minds uh, can be a problem to that uh, he wants a team uh, from a defensive organized structure to to punch quickly to go forward and and uh, uh, have a transition game and uh, that can be sometimes uh, very successful a lot of you see you know in european football even the teams that um, can dominate with uh, have a dominance with the ball but they still want to uh, wait and and, and counter attack and uh, play a transition game um, they have the players for it uh, chiefs can't dominate the game through the midfield they don't have the quality for it بالحديث عن بيتسو موسيماني وانت لعبت ضده في جنوب افريقيا اكثر من مره تفتكر هو المدرب اللي الاهلي يقدر يبني عليه مشروع جديد يقود الخطوه اكبر عالميا Uh, the bigger steps, obviously, you have achieved so many things in South Africa and in, uh, in Egypt, uh, in African football. This is a club that uh, wants to win. And not only win is not enough, also play a type of football that attracts the people. So it's, it's uh, uh, sometimes very difficult to combine each other. And, uh, the club is an important club in, in, for Egyptian football and in, in, in African football. Uh, the next step is obviously achieving the world, uh, world stage, uh, at least to play this. Final or play the final.
um, it's very difficult uh, between African football and uh, the international football. In the end, you will play against the top side of European teams. Uh, the difference is very big, I must say that, uh, still very big. But uh, Al Ahli is in a good way to do that. Um, have many times played now uh, this type of a tournament uh, and uh, knows actually how many you play that, so many you will understand what are the philosophies and the possibilities to reach that semi final or to reach this final uh, in this type of a cup. And uh, I think Pizzo has um, has adapted in the last years to to the modern football. He has uh, he understands to win. He understands he brought uh, um, to Sundowns a philosophy that has be, began a stability in all those years, uh, winning the titles left, right, and center in Africa, South Africa, and international. So I think if if uh, Egypt uh, in Egypt football can be a little bit more patient, he will adapt more and more to that and. Uh, the next step is always the, the there's only one thing to achieve for for uh, there's there's no more to, to achievement to win the league every time to win the champions league but being very successful in the club world cup so um, that is the next step and i think pizza has the quality and the possibility as a coach to put it but you have also the limitations against a world stage like that so you must also admire that and know that and uh, I, I personally believe that uh, uh, Pizzo can bring more stability in all those years to, to this team because I, I worked against him. We, we enjoyed uh, our competition to play against. Uh, yeah, no, it was always challenging and it's, uh, it's nice to see him doing so well. حاليا احنا بنسمع عن مقارنات كتير بين مانويل جوزي وبيتسو موسيماني وتجربة كل واحد فيهم مع الأهلي. تفتكر المقارنة هنا منطقية وهل في مجال المقارنة بين الاثنين؟ yeah, I think we love that every time. We love uh, always the uh, comparison. It's, it's a different first. Uh, I love to hear every time the comparison between Ronaldo and Messi and, and Mourinho and Kloppo. Uh, Klopp, so it's, there is no comparison. It's, uh, we shouldn't do that um, because those years was different. Uh, on those years, you could uh, do a fantastic tactical approach and you could uh, do, a, let me say, uh, you could get something out of it, but today only a tactical approach is not enough anymore. So the physical strength, the organization, the scientific background, the analysis. Uh, today the players are different. 20 years ago the player was completely different. The time when I played uh, was completely different. So players have become uh, big assets in football now and they are like uh, you have 25 companies now to the game and you bring, need to bring these companies together. So it's much, much more difficult and much more challenging for and you have to go with the time. I don't think so we should compare those times each other. Today it's very, very difficult to to be very successful continuously uh, with a team and players uh, because the demand is much more higher than on those years. Today you have uh, even the medical uh, department is, has become uh, crazy. The analysis has become crazy. And uh, so as a coach today, you need to use that much better. We'll continue in the discussion about the players that you played against. Who, from your point of view, was the best player, whether it was Khaled Bibo, who you talked about, or Mohamed Abu Treka, or a player of another player? Abu Treka was obviously uh, something different uh, in the way how he approached the game. But on that time, you had Khaled Bibo, which was a, a top finisher, a very clever player. Uh, when you played against Khaled, I had also Mohsen Abu Grisha. I loved to work with Mohsen uh, on those years. I could see that he has special, or Ahmed Fati, or, or Hosni Abdurabu. These were special, uh, special talents in Egyptian football, I think. Uh, today you have more, uh, uh, obviously, individual part is very much important, but you, you look much, much more as a coach in a collective, collective way. The way when you when you lose the ball, you have a, you need to have a certain collection in a team. The collectiveness has to come out because you want to. Uh, there are demands in football, like uh, when you. Uh, play a transition game, you need to have that under 10 seconds, uh, 12 seconds. If you can't do that, uh, the defense will be again organized. So today, any any defense can be organized. And to to unlock this, you need obviously in the, in the collectiveness, in the special zones, uh, you need players that can unlock uh, this. You need special players with space, technical abilities and tactical uh, tactical awareness. So the, the demands of today's of football is completely different. And... Uh, Obviously, those years we had a little bit more time on the ball as well. In my time, we had so much time on the ball. So today is much more with space, much more. You when you need to find spaces how to unlock defensive lines, and uh, this became more 
more challenging. And I think uh, on those years you had Hadari Hadari. I think what a goalkeeper he was. He played with until he was 40 years old. So you could see that uh, that uh, these were special players. Today is much more different. Today you want pacey, quick uh, players as well uh, uh, players in the, in the in the tactical formation. سيد محسن لكن انت شايف ان نجوم مصريه بحجم محمد ابو تريكا وخالد ديبو ومحمد بركات ليه ما قدروش يوصلوا للقيمه العالميه اللي وصل لها صامويل ايتو وديدي دروكبا ويبقوا نجوم عالميين وتاريخيين بالنسبه لكره القدم الافريقيه يا yeah, this is this is the challenge what i have also here with the turkish federation i'm uh, i'm busy with to to um, let me say the the youth development structures uh, in african football is still a little bit more behind Um, the coaches, youth coaches, youth development coaches, who gives them is like you going uh, to the to the to the school and and uh, international football today. Every player have around 10 to 12 years of a, a proper organized youth development structure. It's like you going from uh, from uh, uh, top school to the prof to to the university. But in Africa, I can see that uh, most of the teams you go to the middle school, you have five, six, maybe years good of youth development, and then you go to the university. So you're missing those years of, of proper youth development, and that's where the the whole problem is. You you go from the middle school to university, which you, the other ones in international football have college, the right education, and uh, the let me say the scouts in world football are so so busy to find. The, the 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 best talents in the world, and uh, I think uh, Egyptian players have that. They have characters. They are they have they have the technical skills, but the tactical aspects today of the game is so much so much different, uh, and the demand is so much different. You need to get those players in international competition with the international uh, players in in Europe uh, that can be uh, exchanging uh, contracts, exchanging uh, uh, possibilities. So that also coaches from high demanding countries come to Egypt and give the youth uh, development structure help to the coaches and develop those coaches in their own backyard. They don't need to go there. They're in their own backyard uh, get the knowledge about what is happening day to day international football. That might be a little bit, but the youth section, not the professional. It has to be in the youth development. إذا أنت شايف إن تطوير الشباب هي المرحلة الأهم لإنتاج جيل قادم أكثر تطورا من أي أجيال سابقة في كرة القدم المصرية؟ Yes, I mean, uh, look to, to for instance, uh, uh, Mohammed uh, comes to to us from Zamalek, to Galatasaray, of course, and scores every game and scores. Uh, and I was very happy to see this. Uh, and I uh, really would love to see some more players coming to to Turkey from Egypt, and um, they can use Tur the Turkish Super League to the step to to the international football because Turkish league is also very tough, very, very aggressive and. Uh, So you need those elements uh, to to be in the competition with the European football, and I would I would suggest that, and I'm suggesting here to the Turkish clubs or the coaches or in the federation that we have to look a little bit more to Egypt, to Algeria, to 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 this type of countries that you can probably the uh, it is a multicultural environment at the moment. You have ten uh, different countries playing in Turkish football in one team, so. Yeah. You need to you need to find as a coach a consensus where how do you can handle the multicultural uh, environment, the multicultural languages. And I think Turkey is a uh, it's it's a good stepping stone for Egyptian players or Tunisian players or to go from here to the next level. You talked about Mustafa Mohammed and the value that he brought to Galatasaray. Do you think he can reach a high level like he reached Mohammed Salah on the world stage? No, Mohammed Salah is a different player. Uh, Mustafa is, is much more a box player. He reminds me of Gat Müller. لكن اسمح لي سيد محسن أن هنا أعني المسيرة التي حققها محمد صلاح وليس مركزه في الملعب. This career, I think, it's very, very difficult to achieve uh, because he plays in one of the best teams in the world, and he's regular, uh, not one year, two year. He's regular five, six, seven years in, in the same level. This is very difficult. Uh, this um, this is a special talent which which you don't have. That it comes 20 years, 30 years once. This type of talents, but uh, for Mustafa is important. He can reach a certain level, and uh, he's a fantastic finisher. And I love uh, and and, uh, and when we when we watch these games, and I knew when he comes in, he's very good on timing on the head ball. He's good in the box. He doesn't need to run around. He doesn't need to go to the wings to carry the ball. He 
it's just been more in a in a in a box area that you can finish the game. Uh, today football is one touch or two touch you finish has to be a goal two touch again around the box mostly is no goal anymore so he has that clean shot shot and not many teams not, not many players can can provide these uh, abilities hopefully uh, he will understand and he needs to be a little bit more consistent in his approach uh, between the first game and the 20s game there's too many too many uh, in and outs at the moment yeah. yeah the moment when he's more and more consistent i think that that will, will bring him to another level عشان انا عارف طبيعه عملك عايز اسالك سؤال اخير عن توقعاتك لنهائي دوري الابطال ما بين الاهلي وكايزر تشيفز yeah, I wish that uh, uh, it has been they must know that it's going to be watched uh, in international football uh, there will be a lot of scouts talents uh, talent scouts watching those games and that's the first one that uh, every every club every team every player can market themselves for, for the next level uh, secondly i think al ahli has an upper hand the reason is uh, Pizzo. Uh, the coach have um, played so many times against Kaiser Chiefs. He knows the culture, he knows the players, he knows the way they approach, he knows the opponent coach, Baxter very well, they played many times each other. So this is a big advantage uh, to that. Uh, I personally believe al is going to win this game uh, because of uh, so many reasons. But football, this is a final, anything can happen, you need to take that very serious. Uh, in the end, it will be a good. Uh, there will be a one more structured defensive team which wants to counter attack. As other team, uh, uh, Al Ahly will be more on the ball, will more try to unlock the defensive lines, and I think the first, uh, the ones who scores the first goal, gonna win the game. Is it that you think that this game is the final goal? Yeah, I don't think so. It's gonna be much many goals to see, uh, but. Uh, to predict this type of finals is always it's always also luck. You can see uh, there is a team with structure wants to play a certain type. There's another team wants to play a certain type. And obviously you need to be careful uh, as a team who has the ball to not make uh, mistakes and get get the punch. And um, and the other team needs to be careful how to block the lines uh, and uh, not allow the def- the opponents to come behind defensive lines. So. Uh, but I think the, the looking into all those elements, uh, Al Ahly will have a part. في النهاية بنشكرك سيد محسن على دمك لنا في هذا الحوار ونتمنى نشوفك تاني في القاهرة. Thank you for having me and uh, greetings to all friends there.